This is Trekzone's Talk and Science. Welcome to Talk and Science. This is the podcast here at Trekzone where we dive into the latest science and space news. Dr. Brad Tucker is here every uh, first Tuesday of the month and I'm bringing you the bite-sized headlines uh, the weeks in between. Let's get straight into this week's headlines. Gilmore Space Technologies have signed an agreement with Commercial Space Technologies Limited to facilitate launch capacity of up to 50 kilograms on rideshare launches. At the small satellite conference in Utah, it was announced that Gilmore Space and the UK-based launch broker had signed the agreement to participate in the commercial rideshare opportunities, which will be offered as part of the Ares Block 1 rocket. Space Australia reports that Gilmore Space will provide the orbital launch service and commercial space will provide full oversight. This combination of expertise will offer affordable launch solutions to commercial customers who need to access custom low Earth orbits. A trial of new technology has yielded success for Fleet Space Technologies in the hunt for critical lithium deposits in the Northern Territory. Fleet Space deployed the Exosphere Communications System to faster and non-invasively find critical lithium deposits in the north of Australia. Using wireless sensors called geodes, which are placed into the ground by hand, Exosphere maps the seismic waves from the subsurface via ambient noise tomography. The geodes capture the data, relay it to Fleet's Alpha constellation of low powered satellites, which in turn passes that information on to the client on the ground. The results were verified by comparing it with pre existing data, which had been obtained by drilling over 500 metres in the ground. NASA has announced 13 potential landing sites on the lunar surface for Artemis 3, which will be the first human landing on the moon in over 50 years since Apollo 17. Each of the regions are located within six degrees of latitude of the lunar south pole and collectively contain diverse geologic features, NASA said in a media release. Together, the regions provide landing options for all potential Artemis 3 launch opportunities. Specific landing sites are tightly coupled to the timing of the launch window, so multiple regions ensure flexibility to launch throughout the year. All regions considered are scientifically significant because of their proximity to the lunar south pole, which is an area that contains permanently shadowed regions rich in resources and terrain unexplored by humans. Led by Swinburne's Professor Akbar Ramandi, a team of researchers have published the first detailed study of its kind on metal production on another planet. Together they've developed a process that would take processed air, dirt and sunlight on Mars to create metallic iron. It uses concentrated solar energy as a heat source and carbon, which is produced by the cooling of CO gas in the Martian atmosphere. Producing metals on Mars would significantly reduce the cost of future spaceflight by negating the need for sending such materials from Earth. The team are now working closely with CSIRO Minerals and the CSIRO Space Technology Future Science Platform to take the research to the next stage. Ston uh, Satonix, Australia's newest supercomputer, has produced a highly detailed image of a supernova remnant immediately after the computing system's first stage was made available to researchers. The CSIRO's science data processing team utilised the high-speed finder relay between ASCAP and the Pawsey Supercomputing Research Centre in Perth to transfer data collected on the radio telescope situated on Wiradjuri Yamati country in Western Australia. Now while Satonix is ramping up to full operations, so is ASCAP, which is currently wrapping up a series of pilot surveys and will soon undertake even larger and deeper surveys of the sky. Satonix will be used to process the data collected by ASCAP. The new, the sounds, the use of sounds even to represent astronomical data instead of graphs and visual representations is on the rise and could be key in helping researchers make new discoveries according to an overview of the practice published in Nature Astronomy. That's because compared with our eyes, ears are better at perceiving time-based information, patterns and transient changes. This means that allocating different sound parameters such as pitch, volume or tempo to different data points can help people People pick up on sudden events or disturbances that could be missed in the blink of an eye. Think radiation levels or gravitational waves here. Developing new techniques with sound also has great potential to increase the accessibility of astronomy to people who are blind or who have low vision, as well as those with dys dyslexia and autism. 
Well, Trexone's Artemis 1 launch coverage is in the finalisation stage ahead of Monday's launch window for the historic return to the moon, just short of 50 years since Apollo 17. And then just over 50 years, possibly over 51 years uh, for the human landing on the surface. I'll be calling on Trexone's friends to produce coverage of a different flavour, focusing on the launch itself. Dr Brad Tucker will be here and hopefully Glenn Nagel will beam in from Tidbinbilla, one of the three critical communication links for the mission that enters NASA's Deep Space Communication Network, anything beyond Earth orbit. We'll take you live to the Cape for the launch as well across the two hour launch window. This is a historic moment in human spaceflight as we finally return to spaceflight beyond our planet's orbit. In the following week, the 6th of September, Dr. Brad will beam in once again to bring us a roundup of the biggest stories across the past month. The bite sized Trek Zone at Talking Science Wrap of the Week will return on the 13th. Trek Zone membership is available via the join button under each video on YouTube or via the trek.zone slash support. Plus, Trek Zone's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and your favourite podcast feed. Find us, like, follow, and subscribe. One time contributions are also welcome. Click thanks under our YouTube videos or head to the trek.zone slash PayPal to contribute to the 20th anniversary celebrations in July next year. Thanks for watching Talking Science. I'm Matt Miller. I'll see you in the comments.